Please, please pay close attention to these words of the Lord Jesus. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Maybe you have heard this verse before. But what I will tell you now, you might have never heard before. Pay close attention. I remember in my childhood, I was brought up along my childhood years for several times having to receive some visitors some family members due to battles they were facing. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have a crisis in your family and you have to run towards your family member's house. And that happened a lot in my house. We received family members who come to stay for a few days and sometimes even weeks. And I remember that when that happened, there was a mix of feelings from me. I was a child. But the mix of feelings was, look how nice. We will have the children of so-and-so to play with us. You know, for a child, more children, the merrier. More games. I had this sensation. But it only lasted for five minutes. The joy only lasted for five minutes because the bad and hard consequences will come soon when you're sharing a small room made only for four, now there are eight. Then you start to face the hardships like a kill to use the toilet, who did eat my food, so and so ate my bread. And then those problems will start to appear. And when we would hear, so and so is coming, we'll say, oh no, again. We felt, as children, we would feel that that would interfere in our freedom, in our daily life. Today we understand how good it was for my family to receive relatives in hard moments. But back on those days, I didn't. And when Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. This makes me think about the various ways people believe in Jesus today. There are some who believe in Jesus on the other side of the door on the outside, as long as he does not enter and interfere, does not come to eat your food, sit at your table, as long as he does not start to move the furniture inside the house, as long as he does not affect your routine. There are some who believe in like that, with him on the outside, not on the inside. There are several ways to believe in Jesus, and every day it seems that there's a new one created. I will speak about some. There are many who believe in Jesus in a historical way, and I want to reinforce that according to the Word of God, there's only one way to believe in Jesus. But the world starts to create many ways, because the devil starts to make people to believe like this. As long as you are well, it's okay. And it's not. I believe in Jesus and that's all. No. Which way do you believe in Jesus? Because if you don't believe in God as the scriptures say, then there's no point. You cannot believe as the news say, as the grandmother said. You must believe as the scriptures say. So be careful, because maybe you are believing in Jesus in a way that will not lead you to salvation. Jesus will do nothing for you. This Jesus maybe is not the one from the Bible, it's not the true one. 
So let me start here. One way to believe in Jesus, the historical way. The historical way is to recognize that Jesus existed, was a good man, a good master, taught good things, even performed miracles. I believe that he even performed miracles. But like Napoleon or Socrates, the philosopher, you believe in a historical Jesus, in a historical character, and has nothing to do with you today. He lived thousands of years ago and has nothing to do with you and life moves on. That is a way that many believe in Jesus and even from other religions. There is the religious way of believing in Jesus too. What is the religious way? This one may be influenced by a plaster image that supposedly was Jesus or depicted Jesus, influenced by a painting of Jesus, a movie of Jesus, a religion that presented to you a Jesus according to that religion's whims. And I was a person like that. I believed in a Jesus who was pale, with blue eyes, an image fixed at the top of the wall, either in my house or in the church. And this Jesus was, how can I say, that brought us religious sensations. It led me to do the sign of the cross when I walked by the church or even a cemetery. The religious Jesus. Also, it was irrelevant to me. It made no difference in my life. Perhaps a few observances that the religion demanded. So there is the historical, the religious one, and there's also the way the devil wants you to believe. The Bible says that the devil also believes in God. It's there written, demons believe in God. And they still remain as demons. How can you believe in Jesus as the devil believes? It's to believe and do nothing about it. It's to believe in Jesus and to not worry about what he said, what he wants. It's to live life the way you want. And usually it's contrary to everything he taught. That's the way to believe in Jesus, the way that the devil wants. And there are many living like that, even people who attend churches. Okay? And there is this way of believing in Jesus at the other side of the door, at a distance from afar. The person goes to church, maybe even present offerings. They aim to be a good person, to follow the principles of a good Christian. But deep down, deep down, they do not want much interference from Jesus. In other words, they don't want to open the door of their lives to the Lord Jesus. Because, do you remember when my family will open the door for relatives? When you open the door of your house to receive somebody, be certain that will affect your routine or your life. This will affect the most intimate thing. And there's nothing more intimate than your house. So when you open the door of your house to receive somebody, that will affect you. And you will have to change your routine. You will have to share your bread. You will have to change certain behaviors to lose some privacy. You have to lose something because you are receiving that person in your life, in your house. Now, many things you will do will be around that person and at their taste. Well, if you want to be a good host. And it's no different when we open the door for the Lord Jesus. Many don't want to open the door for Jesus because they know that if he enters and sits at the table with them, He'll have some hard talks with them and they will speak about certain topics, specific ones that they would not want to talk about. 
he will demand some changes of behavior that they don't want to change, he will eat some of their bread from that table, not that he will make anybody poorer. Imagine. I remember that Jesus took the bread with five loaves of bread and two fish and returned to him twelve full baskets with bread and fish. I imagine how many times God gave abundantly, never took anything from anyone, never. God asked Isaac from Abraham and made him a father of great nations. So God will never take anything away from you. But at first, the person thinks he will sit at the table with me, will dine with me, will eat of my food. I'm saying someone like when they have a true relationship with God, when they take their faith seriously, they will return their tithe, they will present their offerings, they will sacrifice, they will do what faith demands because Jesus taught Nobody has taught so much about giving in practice than Jesus. So when the person understands to enter their house, to enter their lives, will impact them significantly, then they prefer to keep Jesus on the other side of the door and they speak to Jesus through the keyhole. When they need something, they approach the door and say, Jesus, can you help me with something? They put a coin under the door. Here, Jesus, receive this and give me something. They keep Jesus on the other side of the door, but they don't open the door for Jesus, which is the only correct way to believe in him. Is for you finally to open the door of your house and say to him, from now on, it is no longer my house, it is yours. Do what the Lord wants. Here inside, you are the first, you are the center, you are the owner. I'm ready to do whatever you want. This is the only and true way to believe in Jesus. The only one that will lead you to salvation. The rest is deception. Either you are deceiving yourself or somebody is deceiving you. So wake up. The question is, how do you believe in Jesus? How? And if this way will truly lead you to where you intend to go. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.